Kelly here. Welcome, everybody. Um, it's my birthday today, so we're going to have a special, well, I think it's special, little um, stretching, kind of take it easy sort of class today. All right, so if you're joining me live, then please make your way down to a nice laying down position on your mat. And don't take Shavasana just yet, although if that's what you need today, that's totally understandable. And feel free to do that. All right. And bend your knees so you can connect the soles of your feet to the floor. That's it. And you can take your shins to vertical, however you wish. That's it. And just feel your feet underneath you. Take your feet as far away from your torso as you need to accommodate your knees. And I'm going to join you on the mat here. So give me a second to hop onto that. Oh. And as always, start by bringing some awareness to the breath. You can let your palms rest alongside your body on the floor. You can close your eyes if you wish and draw the breath all the way in through the nose. Make sure you expand the chest, expand the upper abdomen, expand the lower abdomen. Send it into the low back. And when you exhale, exhale through the nose as well and release. Release the lower abdomen, release the upper abdomen, release the chest. Let the belly go. Let your low back release. So as you're lying here and you're taking these breaths, notice what part of your back body is connected to the mat. Do you have a slight lumbar curve? Do you have one hip that's maybe a little bit more connected or less connected than the other? Is one side of the rib cage feel heavier? Notice how the palms of your hands feel on the mat and the soles of your feet and the back of your head and then sink into that a little bit deeper. So bringing awareness to each part of this body, each part of your body, sink into it a little deeper, draw the breath in more, use that inhale to expand fully and use the exhale to release. That's it. And there's no judgment on the breath, just awareness. And now bring a little bit more awareness. Try to press your whole back body to the mat. So maybe it involves pushing the low belly into the spine a little bit more so you can connect that lumbar spine. Maybe it involves just releasing the shoulder blades a little bit more or making the head a little bit heavier, maybe even holding on to the neck, whatever it is. Bring some awareness to the feet and breathe into that. Nice job. Okay, and in today's class, I just invite you to bring awareness to each part of the body as we move through that connectedness, the breath, bring the breath to whatever the part of the body that we're going to be working today, all right? And then when you're ready, you're gonna draw your knees in towards your chest. Bring your hands to the outsides of your shins and you're going to take whatever action feels good here. Maybe rocking out through the lower spine, maybe making some circles with the knees. And again, bringing awareness, what's happened to your head? Is the low back connected? Am I engaging in my feet? Really engage through the toes. That's it. You can rock back and forth. I forgot to mute you guys online, so I'm going to do that right now. Let me do that while you're moving through this. And I'll unmute you all again at the end. There we go. Okay. Nice work. All right, and from here, extend your heels towards the ceiling. Really pull the toes back towards your face. Press out through the heels. Feel the engagement in the whole back of the legs and feel the engagement of the back, pushing the low belly into the spine. Again, palms can connect to the floor. You can have the arms wide or alongside your body. Breathe into this. And then just take some circles with the ankles. 
You can do it opposite direction, same direction, whatever you wish. And now point your toes towards the ceiling. Press, 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 but don't lift the hips up. Keep the low back connected to the floor. Now flex your toes back towards your face. And then crunch your toes like you're curling your toes around a pencil. And move through this. So point, flex, crunch. Point, flex, crunch. Point, flex, crunch. And if you need to spend an extra beat in one of these, you might notice the fronts of the shins start to get a little bit fatigued. And then release the knees, let the heels just flop towards the bum. Nice job. Let's plant the sole of the left foot on the mat. Draw your right knee in towards your chest. Give it a squeeze and right away flex the toes on that right foot. Pass your shin into your right hand. Start to draw the right knee to the right. You can extend the left arm out to a T if you wish. You can extend through the left leg. And if you're extending through the left leg, notice if you roll onto that right hip as much as you can. Keep the whole back body connected to the floor. So there's a little bit of work involved here. Notice where the shoulder blades are. Breathe into this. The inside of the right thigh is going to go towards the ceiling. And then take that right shin to vertical. Allow your right hand to rest somewhere along that right leg so that you can again just keep that whole connection of the back to the mat. So there is some work involved here. Breathe into this. Maybe circle out this ankle. If you want to go deeper on the stretch, you can take your left arm on a diagonal away from you to the top left corner behind you. Make the shape as big as you can. Right leg is far to the right, left arm is far to the left. And then bring that knee back into center, give it a squeeze. Let's take the left hand to the outside of the right thigh or right shin. Extend your right arm out to a T. You can bend the left leg if you need to, roll onto your left hip, and allow the right knee to come over to the left side of the body. Huh. And you can anchor through the right palm if you wish, or lift up through the shoulder. You're gonna do whatever feels good here in the low back. Breathe into this. Reach as much as you can through the right hand. You can take the right knee up and towards the chest, any amount. And then carefully pull the low belly into the spine, draw both knees back. Plant the sole of the right foot and cross the left thigh fully over top of the right. You can bring the legs to eagle legs, so slightly lift up through the feet and hook your left toes around the right shin. Or you can simply squeeze this leg to the outside of the shin. So squeezing the inner lines of the legs together, that's the goal here, whatever you choose. Keep pushing the low belly into the spine, interlace your fingers behind your head, and let your head be heavy in your hands. Open the elbow, so open the chest. Notice if the middle part between the shoulder blades starts to lift up. If it does, press that down and reach outside to the, through the elbows more. Let the head be heavy. Just take a breath here. And now you can tuck the chin into the chest slightly. Pull the knees into your chest. Just give that in a squeeze. Take your elbows towards your knee. Give it a little crunch in like this. Stay active through the toes so you can point or flex the feet. It doesn't matter. And then keep the head lifted slightly. Let the head rest in your hands, but draw the elbows wide. Then take your knees over top of your hips and push the low belly into the spine. So you're squeezing the thighs together. The shins are going to be as vertical as they can. The head is heavy. The heart is lifting up slightly here. Let's tap the toes to the floor, pushing the low belly into the spine. Bring the knees over the hips, shins to parallel. Tap the toes to the floor. Bring it back. Really work through the core, work through the elbows. Breathe here. Try and flatten out that back as much as you can. You can do as many as you wish. And when you feel like you've had enough, do at least four, but when you feel like you've had enough, you're gonna bring your knees up and towards your chest, squeeze everything up and in, elbows come towards the knees. That's it. Carefully release the hands, bring them to the floor, unwrap the legs, extend them towards the ceiling, give them a shake. Take the arms up, give it a shake, dead bug. 
Nice job. Bring the feet back to the floor. Huh. Once again, bring that awareness to the whole back body. Plant the sole of the right foot, pull the left knee in towards your chest. And stay active in the left toes right away. Breathe into that. Take your right arm out to a T. Anchor through that palm. Start to open the left knee wide to the left like you're trying to pull it towards your armpits. You can keep the sole of the right foot planted or extend through that leg. But notice what's happening on the right side of your body. If your right shoulder blade and your right hip bone is lifting up, you're going to actively pull that back and down. Breathe into this. Nice wide shape. Follow the breath all the way in. And as you exhale, follow it all the way out to release. Okay, here we go. Half happy baby, take that left shin to vertical. Make the shape nice and wide. Keep anchoring through the right side of the body. Breathe into this. Maybe circle out the ankle. Notice how it feels in your body. Nice work, everybody. Yeah. And then draw that left knee in towards center. Give it a squeeze. Take your right hand to the outside of your left shin or left thigh. Take the left arm out to a T. Bend the bottom leg if you wish. That's your right leg. Come onto that right hip. Draw the left knee over to the right side of the body. And again, whatever feels good here in the lower back. Lots of options. You can have the knees together if that's what you need. You can straighten through the bottom leg. You can take support between the thighs. You can reach out through the left hand a lot or a little. You can take that left hand away from you. Breathe into this. And then carefully draw it back into center. Bring both knees in towards your chest. Plant the sole of your left foot. Cross your right thigh over top of the left. Squeeze the thighs together. You can take eagle legs here if you wish. You can anchor through the palms just for a moment to organize the legs. And bring that awareness again to the low back, squeezing the thighs together. Then interlace your fingers behind your head. Take the non-habitual lace if you can. And just let the elbows open, let the head rest and be heavy. Notice if you can connect the back ribs and the shoulder blades to the floor. Might take a little bit of effort, breathe into that. You might feel a nice opening across the chest as well. That's it, and now tuck the chin into the chest slightly. Lift up a little bit, draw the knees in towards you and take the elbows towards the knees. Stay active in the toes. And then allow the elbows to open up if you need to bring the head down, please do. If you can just tuck the chin into the chest slightly and open the heart, crack the heart open towards the ceiling. Awesome. Take the knees over the hips. Shins are vertical. Here we go. Pushing the low belly into the spine. We've been here before. Take as many here as you wish. Being mindful to really activate. Push that low belly into the spine. Bring the knees over the hips, shins come to vertical. Just tap the toes each time. That's it. Okay, and then draw the knees in towards your chest. Squeeze your elbows in towards you. Unwrap the legs, send the legs towards the ceiling, lower the head and the shoulders. You can wiggle up through the arms and the legs, whatever you wish here. Nice job. And then you can walk along the length of your spine. Oof. Let's come into a seated position in the middle of the mat. How's everybody doing? Good. Take something underneath your sit bones. Hopefully your strap is somewhere nearby where you can reach it. So if you can, grab that. That's it. Take a moment to do that. And then just find a crossing of your legs. You can take some shoulder circles here, connect back to the breath, one at a time. Again, just whatever feels like, yeah, this feels good in my body today. The elbows, the neck, maybe the side ribs a little bit more. Breathe into it. And looks like everybody's got their strap, that's awesome. So take your strap out in front of you. Take it to the width of your mat and take an overhand grip, but not too tight. You might want the hands to slide. Inhale to reach the arms up. 
and then exhale to bring it down. So move with your breath here, slow and full and deep. Inhale. Careful to not have the shoulder heads creep up towards your ears. Gather the shoulder blades down the back and then exhale to bring it down. That's it. This time, inhale, reach up. We're going to take it all the way back behind. So maybe the hands need to slide a little bit. Squeeze the shoulder blades. Keep the strap strong. Keep the arm strong. Bring it all the way back. That's it. And then inhale, reach up. Bring it all the way up and over. Good. Most, most of us probably have a little bit of a wider grip, so come back to the width of the mat. Re-grasp your strap. Inhale to reach up. Stay here for a breath. For the exhale. Inhale. And now as you exhale, take the left palm behind the head. Extend through the right arm. Take that left elbow back. Take the right arm back and squeeze the shoulder blades. Breathe into this. That's it. Now bend the right arm, tuck it in behind the low back, extend the left arm up towards the sky, nice and strong, and allow that right arm to tuck in behind you. Breathe into that, yeah. That's it. And then we're gonna lean all the way over to the right, stay heavy in the left sit bone. Get long in both sides of the waist as much as you can. Come all the way back, sit up nice and tall, Take the left arm to the left with that right arm still tucked behind up in between the shoulder blades of the low back as much as you want. Take the right ear to the right shoulder. Breathe into this. Good. Tuck the chin into the chest. Curl down through the head. Allow the left arm to come across to the right thigh. Take the right fingertips behind your hip. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to twist towards the right. My cats are fighting. That's awesome. <laughs> With every inhale, get a little bit longer. With every exhale, twist a little bit more. The neck is the last thing to come. Now drop that left shoulder down and back. Crack the heart open a little bit more. Option to take the gaze to the left. Breathe into this. That's it. Tuck the chin into the chest. Carefully let the hands go back behind you. And then we're going to inhale, reach all the way up. Bring it up and over to the front. Whew. Nice work. Circle out the shoulders. Looks good, everybody. All right, change the crossing of your legs. Put your non-habitual leg in front. There you go. You've got your strap. Lay it out in front of you. Take it to the width of the mat. Inhale to reach up. Stay for the exhale. Draw the shoulders down. Inhale to lengthen through the arms. And slide the left arm out. The palm of the right hand is going to come back to the back of the head. Yeah. And stay strong through that left arm. Draw that right elbow back. And feel the shoulder blades come together like you're opening a little bit more towards the front. Nice job. Breathe into this. That's it. Okay, here we go. We're going to tuck the left arm in behind the low back. Extend through the right arm. Up towards the ceiling. Take the bicep right beside the ear. Choke up on the strap if you feel like you've got a little bit more mobility in that shoulder and one shoulder might be very different than the other. It's okay, breathe into this, whatever you're feeling. And here we go, we're leaning over to the left. Whenever I'm mirroring, I'm sometimes confused. Breathe into this, stay heavy in the right sit bone. Come all the way back. Allow that right arm to come to the right, keep the left arm where it is. Nice. Then take the left ear to the left shoulder. Notice where you feel that. Oh, breathe into it. Tuck the chin into the chest. Curl down through the head. Let's release that strap behind us and let it go. Circle up through the shoulders. Awesome. Nice work. All right. Set your strap aside. Come off whatever support you've got under your sit bones. Come into a tabletop position in the middle of your mat. Set yourself up as you know how. Arms outer shoulder width apart, not too narrow, not too wide. Fingers are spread. Knees are hip width apart and parallel. Tuck your toes and take some cat-cow here with your own breath. Just warming up the back body a little bit more, pressing through the hands. The knees and the toes for your base, hollow out the belly for cat. On cow, soften. Let the Lift the heart, lift the tailbone, yeah. 
breathe into this. Option to spin the hands around, fingers facing towards your thighs. Might feel good here in the forearms. Also option to just gently rock back and forth in this position. So just a little bit back, a little bit forward. You know if this works for your elbows in terms of hyperextension, so just be mindful here. That's it. And then come into a tabletop position. Walk your hands one hand width forward of your shoulders. Take your knees a little bit back behind the hips. Good. All right. Shift the weight forward so that your shoulders come over top of your wrists. Pull the low belly into the spine. Keep your toes tucked. Hinge straight back at the elbows until you feel them connect to the rib cage. Stop there. Pull the low belly into the spine. Now press into the palms. Send your hips back towards your heels. Nice and heavy. Reach through the fingertips as much as you can. Now tuck the chin into the chest. Curl forward through the spine until the shoulders are back over the wrists. Pause here. Keep the, cur the spine curled towards the ceiling. Press yourself back. Keep that nice cat spine. Send the hips back towards the heels. Now bring your forearms to the mat. Look forward and draw yourself forward. You need, might want to come onto the forearms and then come onto the hands. Whatever works for you here. Coming back into this supported bridge. So pull the low belly into the spine. Shoulders are over the wrists. Here we go again. So hinging straight back at the elbows. Grasshopper arms. Squeeze them in towards the rib cage. Press into the hands. Send the hips back towards the heels. Tuck the chin into the chest. Round the spine forward. Cat spine. Come all the way forward. Stay here. And cat spine all the way back. Last time, bring the forearms to the mat or the palms. Draw yourself forward. And if you need to bring your forearms forward a little bit more, and then extend one leg out behind and the other leg out behind. Taking up just a moment here in the forearm plank. Breathe here. And then lower yourself all the way down to the floor. Nice. Okay. Take your fingertips wide off the mat. Untuck your toes. As you inhale, take three strange cobras here with your own breath. Use the inhale to peel the heart up off the floor. Engage through the legs. You're going to feel your knees lift. That's it. One more like this. Inhale. Exhale, lower all the way down. Bring your hands back under your shoulders and then slide your forearms forward into a sphinx pose. Good. Really connect through the palms. Energetically draw your elbows back towards the rib cage. That's gonna lift you up into a nice sphinx. Breathe into this. That's it. Really engage the, the legs as well. So you're pushing your toenails into the mat. Nice and strong, building strength in the shoulders. Good. From here, take your left arm. We're gonna slide it underneath the right towards the left. Use your left fingertips to support you and extend your left palm out in front as much as you need, coming onto the front of the shoulder. So you can bring the right temple to the floor. Your bicep is gonna be somewhere between your chest and your chin. And it might feel like a little bit too much. So you've got your fingertips here for support. If you can take the whole weight of your body onto this into this shoulder stretch, go for it. You might feel it in the top part of the shoulder and breathe into that. Come out of it whenever you need and then slowly slide this left hand back, press up into it for support, come back into Sphinx. Second time, here we are. Energetically draw the elbows back towards your rib cage. Press through the palms as much as you are through, through your toenails. Yeah, feel that engagement. Nice work. Awesome. And here we go. We're taking the left, left arm. Yeah, left arm sliding it underneath the right towards the right. Your right fingertips are here for support. Again, allow that bicep to come between the chest and the chin. This side might be different. If you're coming all the way down, Allow the left temple to rest on the floor. Your palm is facing down on both hands. And then reach through that right, those right fingers as much as you can. 
release into the floor. Allow the weight of your body to give you that stretch in the shoulder. And then carefully slide that hand back. Bring yourself up. You can take another moment in Sphinx Pose if you wish. Breathe into that. There you go. Awesome. So from here, tuck your right toes under. Tuck your left toes under. Pull the low belly into the spine. Come into a forearm plank. Draw the elbows away from your toes, long through the crown of the head, like you're pulling a wire nice and tight. Bring the knees to the floor, press yourself back into a child's pose. Walk your hands, huh? And rest. Connect to your breath. Remember to breathe. Nice work, everybody. Okay, and then from here, going to make your way into a downward facing dog. So take your hands a little bit forward of your shoulders, pedal up through the feet, take a look at your hands, spread through the fingers, make sure the weight's evenly distributed to the index finger and the thumb mount. Take lots of movement in the hips in this first down dog. Breathe into it. That's it. Nice work. Okay. Come high up on your tippy toes. Press into your hands more like you're trying to push the mat away from you. Bend your knees so you can push your hips further and higher back up behind you. Press into the hands as you inhale. Really expand. Feel that. And as you exhale, start to lower the feet to the floor. And try to pull your heels back like you're trying to make your feet longer. So inhale to expand, press through the hands, engage through the hands. Exhale to release through the heels. Pull those heels further back, breathe into that. One more, full inhale, expand through the hands. Exhale to release and settle. Nice job. Bend your knees deeply, plant your hands. You can load your spring, you can step, you can hop, you can walk your feet up to the front of the mat. However you wish. Get up there. Good. And then come into a nice forward fold here. Huh. If your fingers are dangling, please take support underneath the hands. Wherever your fingers are, shift your weight more into the toes. But again, pull those heels down and back like you're trying to make your feet longer. Connect the whole foot to the mat. Let the head go. Look between the thighs, breathe into this. Okay, and here we go. We're gonna sit our hips down and back, chair pose. Reach the arms forward like you're holding a big beach ball. Nice. Take the weight into the heels this time. Let your toes sparkle. Some yoga teachers say that. So let's say that today. Let your toes sparkle. Look past the ends of your knees so you feel the wiggle your toes. Maybe the fingers will start to wiggle too. And then exhale, forward fold. Huh. Shift the weight into the toes. Pull the heels down and back. Bend your knees deeply and interlace your fingers behind your low back. If you can, connect the palms or use a strap. Draw the elbows back behind you. Now sit your hips down and back, coming into a chair. Allow the arms to come down the sacrum, squeezing the shoulder blades together. Yeah, it might not be a full chair. Just notice how that feels here. Squeeze the inner lines of the legs together. Breathe into this. And then straighten through the legs. Take the arms up and over for a bit of a shoulder stretch. Notice how that feels. You can bend your knees more. Sometimes that helps get into the shoulders. You can straighten through the legs more. Send the sit bones towards the ceiling. Wherever you are, breathe. And then let's carefully release the fingertips. Take your left fingertips underneath the shoulder between the feet. Press through the right sole of the foot and take your right hand to your hip, twist towards the right. So your left knee is gonna bend. And I'd like you to think of, with this right foot, think of pressing into the foot rather than extending through the leg. Notice if that makes a difference. I think you'll get more of an engagement, yeah. And maybe the, the hips will come over the ankle. Breathe into this. Maybe reach up through the right arm, look towards the ceiling. Carefully bend both knees. Take the right fingertips where the left ones were. Now we're going to bend the left knee. Yes, straighten through the right leg, but press into that right foot. Yeah. 
Maybe extend through the left arm. Look towards the ceiling. Breathe into this. Press into that left foot more. And then carefully bend both knees. Huh. We're done with that. Tuck the chin into the chest. Uncurl. One vertebrae at a time. Coming all the way up to standing. Whew. Good. Palms facing forward. Take a nice Tadasana here. Connect back to the breath. Good job. Inhale to reach up, look up. Pull the hands down through heart center, bend the knees, fold over the legs. Oh, let it go. Take a halfway lift here. Notice when you engage the legs, when, then, when you go to stretch them after, they should feel better, especially the hamstrings. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees deeply, plant your fingertips. We're stepping the right foot back. And we're going to set ourselves up for a warrior two. So pivot the back foot, that's your right foot. Organize your feet so that the front heel intersects the back arch. Take your left forearm to the left thigh, right hand to the hip. And I'd like you to pause here. Press into the outer blade of that foot, draw the shoulder blades together, take the ears back in space. Breathe here. Option to extend the right arm up and over. So coming into Uttita Parshvakanasana, extended side angle. Bend into that front knee a little bit more. Option to take the hand to the floor or to a block. Breathe into this. Try and take that right sit bone towards the right heel a little bit more. That's it. Okay, here we go. We're gonna press into both feet, come all the way up into a warrior two. Straighten the front leg just for a moment so that you can get your shoulders over your hips. Then bend back into that front leg. Good. Take a look at the inside of your thigh. You should be able to see your big toe mount. So if the knee is collapsing, actually that was a good angle. If your knee is collapsing inwards, pull it out. There you go. That's it. Extend through the arms. Everything is nice and strong, right? Press more into the outer blade of that back foot. That's it. And here we go. Inhale, straighten your front leg. Reach both arms up. And exhale, warrior two. Nice and strong. Inhale, press into the front foot. Strong through the legs. Exhale into warrior two. Awesome. Take the right arm down, reach the left arm up and over. But bend more into that front leg. Sometimes when the arm comes up, we straighten out that leg. Bend into it more. Good. Reach through both fingers. And then bring that left forearm back to the left thigh. That's it. Reach the right arm up and over. Good job. Heel toe that back foot in. Straighten the front leg as much as you wish. Take the left hand down the inside of the left thigh. And you can take the right arm up. So you're in a trikonasana triangle pose. Just a different way of getting here. Keep opening the chest to the side. Draw the shoulder blades down the back. Press into both feet. And then press into both feet, come all the way back up into this nice vertical position. That's it. Okay, here we go. We're going to pick up the back heel, spin the hands to the floor, and step the right foot up against the heel of the left. So scooch it right up. We're on a tightrope, right? We've done this before. Make sure that the feet are straight. Tuck the right knee in behind the left. It might feel wobbly, that's okay. Let's take a halfway lift here. You can bring your fingertips to your shins, test it out, see how it is. <laughs> and then lower down, let the head go. Oh. Really anchor through the feet. So this is where you need to feel your whole foot on the mat. We've been talking about this all class, right? Whatever part of the body we're working. Press both feet into the floor. Bring your hands to your waist. And weeble wobble your way up to standing. Yeah, a little bit test of balance here. Step onto the back foot. That's your right foot. Bring the left knee into the chest and plant that foot. Good, here we are, nice job. Inhale to reach up. Let's take the left, right wrist with the left hand, leaning over to the left, shift the hips to the right. And now draw this right wrist to the top left corner of your room, look down on the left side of the body. And come all the way up. Other side. Take the opposite wrist. Get really long. Squeeze the inner lines of the legs together. 
Drop the shoulder blades down the back, but lean to the right. Take the hips to the left. And then pull that left wrist to the top left corner of your room. Look down the right side of the body. Sorry, the top right corner. Did I say top right? Top right corner of your room. And then come all the way up. Pull your hands down through heart center. Ha, huh, let it go. Grasp opposite elbows. You can take your feet a little bit wider. And just release them. Nice. Bend your knees deeply. Plant your hands. We're going to step the right leg back. Step the left leg back, downward facing dog. Take a full inhale here, and a full exhale. And then float forward to plank, top of a push-up, shoulders are over the wrists, long through the crown of the head. You can bring your knees down if you wish, pressing the floor away. Take the shoulders a little bit past the wrist, press the floor away, lower down with control. Chest arrives first, then the belly, then the thighs. Untuck your toes. Let your forehead rest long and interlace your fingers behind your low back. Draw the knuckles toward your low back. Use a strap if you need. Take the elbows back behind you. Engage the feet. So press the toenails into the mat. You're going to feel the knees lift. Slightly start to peel the heart up off the floor with these elbows bent. Notice how that goes. And then if you wish, you can extend through the arms. Lift up through the toes. Keep the neck long. And I'll spin around here. So you're squeezing the elbows to each other, squeezing the inner thighs, the toe mounds, whatever you wish together, long through the crown of the head. One more breath here. You're on the belly, please breathe. And then exhale, lower down. Oh. Bring your hands under your shoulders, tuck your toes. Come into a child's pose. Untuck your toes, send your hips towards your heels. Let the head rest. Walk your fingertips over to the right side of your body. Send the hips to the left. Option to take this left palm on top of the right. And breathe into that. And then option to walk the hands over to the other side. Over to the left, send your hips to the right. Tuck the chin into the chest. The right palm can come on top of the left. Breathe into that. And then carefully walk yourself back to center. Here we go. And come into a downward facing dog. Take a full inhale here. And a full exhale. Bend your knees deeply, load your spring. Come to the top of the mat however you wish. You can hop, you can step your feet however you want. When you get here, take a forward fold. Huh. Let the head go. We've been here before. Shift the weight into the toes. Breathe. This time we're going to interlace the fingers behind the low back right away. Take the non-habitual grip. Bend the knees a lot. Connect the chest to the thighs. Draw the elbows back behind you. Squeeze the shoulder blades. Let's start to slowly shift our weight into this chair pose. Draw the knuckles down the sacrum. Breathe into this. Keep the neck long and neutral, pull the low belly in. Notice how this goes. It feels a little bit awkward. That's okay. Breathe into it. And now let's release the arms. Shift the weight a little bit more deeper into the hips, into the heels. Yeah. Reach the arms up if you can. Sparkle the toes. <laughs> Take a full inhale here. And a full exhale. Oh, let it go. That's it. Take a halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Oh. Bring your hands to your waist. Squeeze the shoulder blades together on the back. Press into the feet. Come all the way up to standing. Here we are in Tadasana. Whew. How's that going? Inhale to reach up. Pull the hands down through heart center. Fold over the legs. Plant your fingertips. We're stepping the left foot back. And we're setting up for warrior two on the other side. So again... Arrange your feet. Your left foot's going to be parallel to the short edge of the mat. Right heel's going to intersect. Take the right forearm to the thigh. Just pause here. Yeah. Try not to have the chest coming towards the floor. You're trying to open it up. So again, drawing the shoulder blades together helps with this action, right? Press into the outer blade of that back foot. 
bend into the front knee more. Option to take the left arm up and over, extended side angle, or fingertips to the floor. Breathe into this. Reach through your longest finger as much as you can. That's it. Nice smile. <laughs> and now press into both feet like you're ripping them out apart underneath you. Warrior two, bend the front leg just for a moment to take your shoulders over your hips. And here we go, nice and strong. Arms come out to a T. Your ankles are roughly underneath your wrists. Notice if your back arch is caving in. If it is, press more into the blade of that foot. Bend more into the front knee. Look on the inside of your thigh. So much, right? Warriors, that's why they're called warrior poses. They're strong, they're big. There's lots going on, lots of muscles being used. And straighten the front leg, inhale, reach up. And exhale back, oh, warrior two. One more time, inhale. And exhale, bend more into that front knee. Really strong, press more into the outer blade of the back foot. Keep this knee over the ankle. Drop the left hand down, reach the right arm up and over. Breathe into that. Nice job, now take the forearm to the thigh once again. Take a moment to arrange yourself, bend into the knee more, reach the arm up and over. Use your block if you need underneath the right hand. That's it. And now let's heel toe that back foot in once or twice. Straighten the front leg. Take whatever support you need under the hands. You can keep your arm reaching forward. You can bring it up. Trikonasana. Again, pressing into the feet a lot. Squeezing the shoulder blades. Expanding that wingspan as much as you can. Nice job. And then carefully press into both feet. Come all the way up. Good, here we are. Nice job. Okay, we're gonna windmill the hands down. We're picking up the back heel, pivoting the foot. And step your left foot in behind the right. So coming into that tight rope that we did before. Really tuck that left knee in behind the right knee. Anchor through both feet. Take a halfway lift here. Notice how it goes. Release the head. Bring your hands to your waist. See if this side is any better than the other. Obviously, I'm not doing very well at this today, right? Balance is a weird thing. Some days it's awesome, other days not so much. So wherever you are is great. Press into the feet more. Step back onto your left foot, pull the right knee into the chest, plant the sole of the foot. Whew, we're done with that. Nice work, everybody. Shake that out. Good, and then inhale to reach up. Pull the hands down through our center. Ah, oh, full of the legs. Take a halfway lift here, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees deeply. And we are stepping the left foot back, stepping the right foot back. Downward facing dog. Take a full inhale here. And a full exhale. And then just float forward to plank, top of a push up. Shoulders are over the wrist. Take a full inhale here. Lower the knees if you need to. Stay for the exhale. Take the shoulders a little bit past the wrist. Bend straight back at the elbows. Grasshopper arms. Press the floor away. Thinking of pushing the floor away. That'll give you more strength through the hands. Untuck the toes. Take whatever back bend here you wish. So you can take a strange cobra. You can take an up dog. Taking your hands right beside the rib cage. Wrists underneath the elbows. Pulling the low belly into the spine. Pressing into the tops of the feet. You can take a baby cobra. Wherever you are, breathe. Hug the elbows into the rib cage. Exhale to lower all the way down. <sighs> and then extend one arm long out in front. Roll over onto your backs. That's it. Have your block nearby and your strap nearby. Okay. And just arrive on your back. You can windshield wiper through the legs. If you wish, breathe into this. Good, and then take your block. Set your feet up for bridge, so hip width apart and parallel, shins vertical. If you need to take your heels further away from your bum, please do, okay? So it would always accommodate your knees and your low back. Take your block, place it midway between your thighs. 
on the medium width. So not the widest, not the skinniest, but the medium width. Good. Plant the soles of your feet, palms facing down. That's it. And once again, feel the whole connection of your back to the mat, through the palms, through the shoulder blades, through the back body. Good job. All right. Keep the neck where it is. You're looking towards the ceiling. You're not going to rotate through the neck throughout this. And we're going to press into the feet, lift the hips up for bridge pose, squeezing the block. That's it. Option to tuck the shoulder blades under and interlace your fingers. I want to say underneath, behind your low back, you know what I mean. Notice if you're pressing more towards the outside of your feet. And if you are, press more through the middle of the foot and the inside of the foot. So the outside of our legs are stronger. So sometimes we roll onto that outer blade of the foot unknowingly. So notice where you're pressing into your feet. Bring awareness to that. Press into that more. Breathe. Take the chin away from the chest. Chest towards the chin. Pressing in the backs of the arms, the head, the feet. Remember to breathe. One more breath here. Full inhale to expand. And as you exhale, you're going to untuck your shoulders if you have them there. And then from the top of your back, start to peel the body back onto the floor. So upper back between the shoulder blades, thoracic spine, lumbar spine, sacrum. Ha. Huh. Good. Set your block aside for a moment. Take your knees together, take the feet wide. Let your hands come to your belly. You can rest here. Nice work. Okay, setting up for a second bridge, so feet hip width apart and parallel, planting through the feet. Notice how that worked for you. Do you need to adjust your feet at all? Option to bring the block back. Squeezing the block between the thighs once again. Palms facing down to start. Really engage the backs of the arms as well. So use that. You're lifting the heart up as well as the hips. So press into the feet. Lift the heart. Press into the backs of the arms. Back of the head. The neck should be neutral. And option to interlace the fingers once again. It's getting a nice extension through the spine here. Now you can stay here or if you want more of a challenge, you're going to extend through the right leg. Toes go towards the ceiling and bring that foot back. Maybe extend through the left leg and bring that foot back. If you want to do one more time each side, you've really got to press into both feet. The core has got to work here, right? We're keeping the pelvis level. Whatever you've chosen is awesome. Press into the feet. Take one more breath. Lift the hips a little bit higher. And then once again, untuck the shoulders if they're tucked. Mindfully uncurling one vertebrae at a time, starting at the top of the back. Ha. Huh. All right. Set your block aside. Take the soles of the feet together. Let the knees come wide. Bring the hands to the belly. And you can breathe into this. Take your hands to the outsides of the thighs. Bring them in towards your chest. Take your arms to a T. Allow both knees to come over to the right side of the body. So this is in the beginning, we were doing a very active twist, right? We were trying to anchor through the palms and the hips. This one, you're just going to release. Let this one feel good in the low back. Breathe into it. And then pull the low belly into the spine, draw the knees in set towards center, take them over to the other side. Onto the left hip. And again, this is a letting go spinal twist. Always a good counter after a spine extension or back extension like we just did in the bridge. So breathe into that. And then pull the low belly into the spine, draw the knees in towards center. <clears throat> Hopefully you've got your strap nearby. Take your strap. Take one end of the strap in each hand, plant the sole of your right foot on the mat, and take the ball of your left foot to the middle of the strap. So not the arch, make sure it's at the ball, that's where the foot can take some weight. 
let the, slap, let, the, let the strap slide through your hands. Extend the left heel towards the ceiling. So fully extend through this left leg. You've got your steering wheel, that's your strap. You're gently gonna encourage the toes back towards your face. Those of you that know me know this is, this is my favorite torture, I mean pose. <laughs> this is really juicy, right? We're getting as, lots of extension in the back of the leg. And then we're going to take this left leg across the midline about six inches to the right and keep pressing up through the heel. So you might start to feel it in the outside of the shin. The right leg can stay where it is. Going deeper, you're gonna extend that right leg, pressing up through that heel. So keeping that leg active as well. And this is super juicy if you've been walking a lot or biking. Pull down on the left side of the strap. Send the arch and the big toe mound towards the ceiling. Woohoo! Super juicy here. Breathe into that. We're gonna take it to the other side so you decide how long you wanna spend on each side. Pull down on the right side of the strap, so sickling that ankle joint. Now the outer blade of your left foot and your pinky toe mound is going more towards the ceiling. Breathe into that. That's it. And now you're going to neutralize that ankle. Bring the leg back towards center. Take both ends of the strap in your left hand. Extend your right arm out to a T, palm facing down. And you're gonna allow that left leg to open to the left as much as you wish. So I'm gonna give you a bunch of options here. You can make this much more active by ensuring, like we did at the beginning of the class, that the right side of your body stays anchored to the mat, palm facing down. Or you can roll off that hip and get more of an extension in the leg. So you decide. There's no right or wrong, it's just different. Maybe you wanna do a little bit of both. Breathe into this. Whatever your body's asking for, in this pose, you're gonna do that. The only thing I ask is that you keep breathing and you're extending through the back of that left leg. Okay, pull the low belly into the spine. Let's draw that left leg back in towards center. Bring both knees in towards you. See if you can switch on the fly. If not, do what you need to do to take the strap around the ball of your right foot. Plant the sole of your left foot. Extend the right heel towards the ceiling. One end of the strap in each hand. And here we go. One side might feel different. Some days this feels amazing. Other days this is anguish. It's not meant to be painful. Please find your edge. Okay, that point of sensation where you feel like you've got some room to do some work, but it's not painful, okay? Bend the knee if you need to. If it's impossible for you to straighten the leg or Take the leg further away from your face, if to straighten the leg, yeah. So you know your body, you know the sensation that works for you. Okay, here we go, we're taking the right leg across to the left. Keep the left sole, the left foot planted, or extend, okay, that's it. It just hovers somewhere over your left shoulder or left hip. You've got your steering wheel, let's send the big toe mound first. So pull down on the right side of the strap. Arch of the foot, and the big toe mount is more towards the ceiling. Breathe into that. And now switch it up, pull down on the left side of the strap. Send the pinky toe mount and the outer blade of the foot. This is the one that always feels good on me. Breathe into this. So we all have our favorites. Maybe you wanna linger in one a little bit longer than the other. Totally fine. Keep breathing. Bring both ends of the strap into the right hand. Take your left arm out to a T. Open the right leg to the right. And again, decide if you want to anchor through that left hip bone or not. There's no right or wrong here. Allow it to feel good in your body. You're getting an opening. It's all good. Stay connected to your breath. Use your breath. And then pull the low belly into the spine, draw that right leg back. Bend your knees, let your strap set it aside, let it go. Take your hands to the outsides of your shins. You can rock out through the low back. Take your knees wide. So this last pose, 
This last shape is yours. You can take a dead bug. You can take the Farida Karani, legs up the wall or supported under the sacrum, legs towards the ceiling. This is a great one to do before bed. If you're ready for Shavasana, you can take that. You can take a shoulder stand. I like to take a plow pose. It gets right in between my shoulder blades. This doesn't work for some people's necks, but take, you can take a happy baby. Start to slow down the breath. Bring some awareness. Where do I, what does my body need? Where do I want to get a little bit of extra? And then only when you're ready, we are going to slowly start to prepare yourself for Shavasana. So take your body long along the mat. Maybe turn off your lights or get a blanket, or add an extra layer of clothing. Wherever you are is all good. Maybe you've got some music on. I do have a playlist up on Spotify. Clara Krupa, Zoom Yoga 2020. Lots of good music there, if you so choose to play it along during class. And then wherever you are, let your body sink into the mat, let it be heavy. Take your legs apart, feet come open, arms away from the body, palms facing up. With every exhale, start to let go a little bit more. Start with your toes and your ankles, your shins, your knees, your calves. Let your hips and low back be super heavy. Let your hips be heavy. belly button fall into the spine. Release your fingertips, your wrists, your elbows, your shoulders, your back ribs. Let go of your chest and any need to control the breathing. Let your head be heavy. to allow your body to absorb the good work that you did today and let go of what no longer serves you. The work is done. Shavasana. You're welcome to stay in Shavasana as long as you wish. I will lead you out of Shavasana in a few minutes if you wish.
feel free to manage Shavasana as long as you wish. I received a beautiful birthday card today from one of my longest, uh, dearest friends, and she wrote me this. She sent me this, a birthday prayer for you, so I just want to share it with you. May the long time sun shine upon you. All love surround you, and the pure light within you guide you on. And that is my wish for all beings and all of you today. So you can slowly, if you wish, start to bring some awareness back to your breath, back to your body. And just use small, gentle movements in your wrists, your toes, your ankles. That's it. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Let it all out of the body. Let it release. Take another deep inhale. Maybe reach your arms up overhead, away from your feet. And then let it go. And then only as you're ready, slowly start to roll to your right side. Draw your knees in towards your chest. Let your head rest on your arm. And slowly make your way back to Sukhasana in your own time. May the long time sun shine upon you. All love surround you. And the pure light within you guide you on. Sit up nice and tall. Bring your hands to heart center. Bow your head to your heart. Give yourself lots of credit for the good work that you're doing on the mat, showing up, building resilience and strength and tolerance and all the things that we need right now. It's always my pleasure to guide you through your practice. Thank you so much. Namaste.